much. Lovely to see you all. And if you're watching this later online, it's lovely to see you too. Hope you've all survived this week with the very, very hot weather. I think it's a little bit cooler from now on, so today is the downturn, but it's still about 21, 22 this week, so it's still nice, but not as hot, so maybe a chance to actually go outside and have a sit in the garden. I'm going to read you a little thing that um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook, and it does tie in with our thoughts and our service today. Her name is Janet Stafford, and she's a, a lady who worked with my parents at Torch Trust, but then went to... I want to say Nigeria, somewhere like that, as a missionary with her husband, and they were there for many years. People often ask me, why do you do what you do? Generally, I say, because I'm in love. It's true, what I do is not hard. It's not some terrible sacrifice I have to make because God is forcing me to do something against my will. I don't spend every day weeping about how hard my life is. No, I want to be here. I want to do this. I'm joyful about what I'm doing because I'm in love. I do it because he is worthy. I do it because I have glimpsed his heart. What else would I want to do with my life? I may feel totally unqualified to do what I do, but that doesn't matter. He is eminently qualified. All I need to contribute is my willingness. Remember the widow who cried out to Elisha for help. Elisha asked her what she, ha what she, had, what she already had in her possession, and instinctively she replied, nothing. And then she replied, Oh yes, I have a little oil, that's all. So often we are dismissive of ourselves. We say we have nothing, nothing God would want to use. But no, we have a little oil, and that is all God needs to take us and do a miracle. We come up with all kinds of good reasons for why God can't do anything notable or meaningful through us. I've done it myself numerous times. God, what can you do with my life, I would ask. I have no special gifting, no special talent, no outstanding abilities. One time God stopped me mid-flow and said, stop it. I like your little offering. Bring it to me and let me use it. Eventually I realised all he really wanted was my willingness and he would do the rest. He wanted me to stop telling him why he couldn't use me and just say yes. I didn't need to be special, talented or outstanding in any way. I just needed to be willing to come to him and offer up the little reserve of oil I had. So come to him today, offer up the little you have in reckless devotion, pour it out willingly, he will do the rest. And hopefully as the service goes on, you might, that hopefully might tie in with what our reading is and um, what we're thinking about today. So we're going to come to our first hymn, which does tie in with that, and that's I Surrender All. So do stand when the music starts.
I surrender all. Lord, we pray this morning that that will be true for us, that we will surrender all to you, that we will give you the whole of our lives, holding nothing back, and that you will be able to use even the little bits that we worry about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Going to come to the notices. Oh, no, it's not Anne. I looked at Anne, but it's not Anne. They're on the board in a minute when Dave's... There you go. Open home at our house on Tuesday at 6 Wednesday, Open Doors is still on its summer holiday break um, until the costumes come back. Um, but prayer meeting is on at 11.30, 12.30. Pop in any time during that hour if you would like to. Next Sunday, it's Richard Brunton's preaching on 1 Peter 3, 1 to 7. And Messy Church is a week later than normal. So it would be normally this Monday, but it's next Monday, week on Monday, Monday the 18th um, at 4.30. And then on Thursday the 21st, it's youth group. So please pray for both of those, that we'll have new children come to Messy, but also that we'll start having more kids coming to youth group. And um, we've also got um, the request from Richard Brunton, which um, was mentioned last week, of Living Hope Ministries, to respond to the attacks on Christian homes and churches in Pakistan. On the 16th of August, armed mobs attacked the Christian community in the city of Jaranwala and the surrounding area situ situated in the Punjab near the border with India. Homes and churches were burned. Richard's contact, Rashid, has listed the 26 churches that were burnt down, has asked for funds to be sent to help rebuild. Please pray about the situation and whether you can give towards the rebuilding. Place your donation in an envelope, marked LHM, Living Hope Ministries, and place it in the offering box at the back. As uh, Richard is here next week, so we'll be able to give him that gift then. As we come to our time of prayer, um, there's a lot of things as, as usual to pray about in our church, isn't there? People that we love and care for who may not be well. Um, but there's also big things going on in the world, isn't there? So as well as this in Pakistan, there's um, been a massive earthquake in Morocco where the number of dead is now over 2,000 people. And the f massive Greek fires have now burnt over 1,000 square kilometers of um, forest land and it's a route that's often taken by migrants. Um, and so there have, uh, sadly, bodies been found in the burnt woodland of people that perished in the fires. Um, and also, let's pray for our king. He's now been king for a year. The queen died a year ago. Um, and let's continue to pray for the royal family and for our government and people in charge in our country. People have to make really quite difficult decisions, don't they, about how things should be managed and governed over the whole country, but also locally in our small councils and whatever. So let's come to our time of prayer. Anything that's on your heart, let's turn to the Lord and I will close. Lord, I want to bring, bring to you, Lord. Now the lady I met yesterday on our dog walk, and I asked her how I was still was. And he's got this cancer and it's ravaged all through his body. I said, is he at home? He said, still at home, but he's a bag of bones. So I just bring them both to you, Lord. And, and he had a good job, Lord. He's the head gardener at Windsor Castle. So I don't, I never met him. I don't know his name, Lord. I just bring them both to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we pray for those that have lost people in the floods and in the fires and, and in the wars. And, it's not a few people, dear Lord, but it's hundreds and thousands of people that are being killed with these um, things that are happening. And we pray for those that are bereaved, dear Lord, with lost lo loved ones. Mm -hmm. It's very hard, dear Lord, because some of the families have not 
just lost one of their family, but probably all of them. And I do pray, dear Lord, that you will be with them and help them, dear Lord. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we bring to you our brothers and sisters in this area of Pakistan, mm. where the churches and quite often the pastors' homes have been burnt to the ground, mm. nothing left. Lord, you just know how your people love to meet together, to join together with your family, with you as our Father. Um, and we pray for these love um, relations of our own family who now have no place to meet. Not just the walls, it's copies of your word, hymn books, the things we take for granted. And so Lord, we pray that uh, you will release funds to rebuild. And more than the rebuilding, Lord, and the restoration of copies of your word and in books, Lord, we, we just pray for your people that you will fill them with love for those who oppose them. That mm -hmm. they will show your grace and forgiveness. They will demonstrate that to their communities. And maybe make an even bigger impression doing that than they would have done just carrying on meeting together in any close space. Lord, we just pray for them. Pray for those who open their homes for meetings, that you will protect them. And Lord, we, this is just one instance that we know of, um, although there are many churches involved, but persecution of your people is going on all over the world in all sorts of ways. And so, Lord, we pray that your spirit will resource them and give them the continuing love for you and love for those round about them. Amen. 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 And then, Father, we, in your word about... Uh, Christ going up to you from your people uh, in this world and we see that that continues and we were thinking particularly of that earthquake in Morocco in the, in the mountains uh, that um, caused such devastation even in the town of Marrakesh which is some miles away still affected and uh, many buildings have fallen down and as we hear thousands of people have died and yet they haven't been able to move into the mountains to see what happened there yet and so that number will only increase and we see what a terrible thing it is that to live on uh, these fault lines that create earthquakes and uh, maybe people may be comforted but also may move away from those known areas and not just rebuild in the same place and uh, pray, we thank you that some of the, the rescue services have been able to act quickly we pray that um, you might comfort those people that live in a, now in a desolate place and uh, <coughs> feeling um, completely devastated and we pray that they might be um, able to see your love in action. Mm. Amen. 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 <coughs> Church and the youth group, dear Lord, yeah. starting again next week. Mm. And we pray, dear Lord, that more children will be aware of it and be 
scooter along the paper and I'm coming to the even if it's just into the car park to look at the books. Mm. Um, there's something there, dear Lord, that is driving them here and we do pray, dear Lord, that they will come into the church. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the peace and stability that we have in this country compared to many countries around the world. We take it for granted too often, Lord, and we just thank you for that. That you keep us safe and that by having been born here in the UK, we, um, at this particular time, that we do live in a land which is free of war. But Lord, I pray that you'll be with us. I pray that you'll make us braver to speak out for you, to stand up for what is right, and not to be fearful of the teasing or the, the jibes that we might get from people. Uh, Lord, uh, we just pray for Christians around the world who are persecuted in your name to a massively greater degree than we would ever experience here. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with us. Help us to speak out your name and your truth into this society which so desperately needs it. Lord, I pray that you'll be with Kevin as he speaks to us this morning and um, opens up your word to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come to our next song. Um, which is uh, Servant King.
Anne is going to come and give us our reading, which is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 25. Dear friends, I urge you, as aliens and strangers in the world, to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that Though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honour the King. Slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you are called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you are like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Thank you, Anne. And just before Kevin comes to speak to us, we're going to sing our next hymn. Can't remember what it is. Let me ser let us serve you. Oh, there you go. Will you let me be your servant? 
Well, good morning to everybody, and uh, let me just start with a prayer. So, Father, as we come to look at your word today, um, help me to explain it and help all of us to be transformed by it. Amen. The passage that we've looked at today in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, it's all about living a godly life in a pagan society, living a godly life in a society that doesn't acknowledge God. It's a much more difficult society even than the one we live in. There are slaves. There is Caesar, uh, translated in your translation as the king, but uh, Caesar was a much more powerful and more threatening individual than, say, our contemporary constitutional monarch. So it's a very different age with very radical challenges for the Christians who live there. But it's also an age from which we can learn, because if they had to learn this in a really very extreme situation, then in the situations we find ourselves today, uh, we can take comfort and encouragement. So, um, last night, uh, amongst other things, I was watching the last night of the proms, a celebration of being British, a celebration of all those great tunes, Rule Britannia, God Save the Queen, Land of Hope and Glory, uh, Jerusalem, whatever it might have been, there was everybody singing their hearts out. The interesting thing about uh, Christianity is this. Our first nationality, if we're Christians, isn't British, German, French, whatever it may be. It's actually Christian. If you look at verse 11 of uh, 1 Peter 2, I appeal to you, my friends, as strangers and refugees in this world. We're strangers and refugees in this world. We actually should live like that. We're just settled in this world temporarily. We're moving on to somewhere else. And it's provisional that we happen to be British or German or whatever it might be. Ultimately, we're members of the kingdom of God if we're following uh, Christianity. And that transcends all national barriers. So many of the time I've met somebody from a different country um, who has an understanding of God and an understanding of the love of God that's really made me think. And I felt very much closer sometimes to brothers and sisters from many different corners of the world than perhaps even my next door neighbours because they've actually got an experience because they kind of belong to the same country. In and have a shared understanding. So live as foreigners and exiles. Now, good uh, those who come and settle in different countries, they are keen also to make a contribution to that country. Um, so what we should do as settlers and exiles doesn't mean we should just ignore the rest of the world. And some Christians have taken verses like this to say, oh, well, you know, just keep yourself to yourself. No, we should get in there and we should be showing this is what the kingdom is like. This is what God's ultimate nationality is like. So live as foreigners and exiles. This is temporary. This is a journey through to somewhere else. Secondly, um, there is a real challenge about living a good life in this passage. You know, if you're a slave in this passage and you're being told, show some respect to your masters, be a good slave, that's really difficult because your natural inclination if you're a slave is to want your freedom and to immediately go. Now, we don't, well, we do have, unfortunately, in our modern world, we do have examples of slavery. And it is important that in the jobs that we have and in the society we have, all people, uh, particularly those who, who work, that they're treated with respect and they're treated with care. 
But I think Paul, uh, I think Peter here is going to a much deeper principle, and it's this: that we should have a quiet witness in whatever situation we're in. We carry on doing the good. So if we have a difficult next door neighbour who we'd rather like to shop to the environmental health because they're too noisy, we try and we try and we try to do the good thing. Now, there may come a point when law does need to intervene. But firstly, we try the good thing. Firstly, we try the understanding thing. Firstly, we try to come alongside somebody who might be giving us difficulty. Be that in our job, be that as our next door neighbour, be that even, dare I say it, in church. That we try and come alongside that person and try, seek to understand what's motivating them. Why are they behaving in the way that we don't regard as good or right. Um, it's really important to be a witness for good where we can be and to think up ways to do this. It may be that if you're in a work situation, you get Christians together and you come and pray together. That might be one way. It might just be to say, do you know what? I'm going to make sure that I'm going to contribute to parish life in some way in Chaley, that I'm going to be on a committee for a village day or a parish council or whatever it might be. The Christians should be in there seen and known you should be doing good stuff and I think you are through sort of initiatives like messy church through a youth club through caring in the way that I've, I've heard your church before you're doing these things now all I'm going to challenge you is think about what more you could do both individually and as a group how can you reach out and include how can you live a good life not because you're trying to show, look at me, I'm really great. But you live a good life as a witness to the power of Christ. If we do good, we don't do it so it will get covered in the local newspaper. Right? We do good because we love God. And we do good not because we think, right, okay, if I do a lot of good, that guarantees me heaven. No. We do good as an expression of our love in the God who has suffered with us and for us and dealt with our sin. And above all, and this is where I'm going to major most today, we seek service, not power. We seek service, not power. We seek to serve other people. Um, Martin Luther King, about a week before he died, preached a sermon called The Drum Major Instinct. And the drum major instinct was that he said many of us, perhaps not all of us, some of us are good and humble and you're good at this. Um, this sermon really speaks to me, so uh, it might not speak directly to you. The drum major instinct is the person who wants to be at the front of the parade making the noise as the parade goes forward. They want you to know that they're there. All right, if you have a parade, you do need a drum major because that sort of summons everybody to your parade and they all follow the advice. But King was saying, that's actually not a good thing in the kingdom. If we have people who are really obsessed with that, and you will remember the story of James and John who uh, sent their mum to say to Jesus, can I have a bit of power in the kingdom? Can they have a special place? Uh, and they needed to learn that the kingdom was about service. It was about submission. It was about not choosing what you wanted to do, but choosing about what was right. Now, I struggle with this, if I'm honest. Sometimes, when I know I should stop and listen to somebody else, I just want to carry on with my own agenda uh, of doing something else, reading a book, whatever it might be. Um, or I just want to talk, and I don't want to listen. And those are my weaknesses. You might have other weaknesses where you know I'm not quite really serving as I should. Um, but we serve because Christ graciously served his Father and came for us. 
We serve in the power of love. A love that isn't just sort of niceness or British goodness, but it's a love that empties itself, that really keeps on going, sticks with people when they are difficult, sticks with people when things are tough, and it's about service. It's about coming towards God. So, let's just sort of think very carefully about the things I've been saying. So, we live as foreigners and strangers in this world. This is a place we are passing through. So, we know that ultimately. We're passing through. So, we don't need to build a memorial to ourselves in this world. All right? A, a picture God has given me quite a few times on this, when I've been talking about this, is... It's like building sandcastles on the beach. Right. They could be the splendid, you could, I don't know, you could even take a JCB down there and make the biggest possible sandcastle. But ultimately the tide will take it away. Ultimately the sea will defeat however magnificent your sandcastle is because it's built of sand and it will just not be able to resist the tide. Now, there are things in our lives that are like that. They're like us building sandcastles that actually are of no great eternal significance. So my challenge to, to myself and to you is this. What can we build in the power of God? There isn't a memorial to us, isn't a stone statue or even a dodgy sandcastle. What can we build with God that can last for eternity? And that is relationships and knowledge of him and his love and sharing his love. So think that through for yourself. We live as foreigners and strangers. Yeah, but, and so we know, there's an we're calling, we're going to do good, not because it's going to make us look impressive to others, but because we do it out of love for others and we do it out of love for God. We're going to seek service, not power. We're going to seek to help others because of the help that God has shown to us. And now this will come sometimes with some suffering. But the passage is quite clear. When we suffer, when we are insulted, actually we're sharing in the way of Jesus. And we will know blessing it will be buffeting but there will be a blessing we might not see it immediately but I think of some of those difficult moments in my life where I'm now able to use some of those experiences when others come to me and say I'm going through this I thought actually I've gone through that so perhaps I can help you at this moment so one of the things that strikes me at the moment, okay, I'm a retired school teacher, so I am currently spending some time uh, with uh, a guy in his mid 30s who's a teacher who's finding life quite difficult. Now, I can give him some advice, I can give him some help, I can help him along the way because I've been that way before. All right, and that's part of my Christian discipline. And he is—he's uh, a Christian young man. And I'm trying to help him find the way for him. Um, I don't come in and just tell him my old stories. I try and listen to him, and try and see what is it because his issues m will be different from mine. There might be some overlap, but I've got to listen to him as well, so I can truly help him. So, where? Who could you help? Who could you go to a coffee shop with this week, or? wherever you go, um, to relax. Who could you go and just have a conversation with them that could help them? Just think that one through for yourself. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you that we do live as foreigners and strangers in this world. Thank you that ultimately um, our nationality is with you, our identity is with you. Uh, we do pray for each of us and the connections we have, the relationships uh, friends, family, people in the community. Help us to um, serve them. And may this week we have one conversation that actually helps someone so significantly that it will stand for eternity. 
Amen. We're going to come to our final hymn, which is How Great Thou Art. for a moment. Dave and I were talking about this passage when we read it through the other day and um, we were thinking, like Kevin was saying earlier, about 
how our society is different. We don't have to submit in the same way that you would if you were a slave or if you were under the Roman Empire. But we were thinking about things that we might find difficulty submitting to. And one that sprang to Dave's mind, I have no idea why, was speed limits. Um, <laughs> he's a regular on the speed awareness course, which he loves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. But it's that sort of thing, isn't it? I Little things that actually we need to be careful that as Christians we set a good example of. And I find it difficult to to do 20 mile an hour is really slow isn't it and you're used to driving fast in the countryside and then suddenly you're in a town and 30 you're suddenly having to you know when I go through Ofham you've got to go right down to 30 there even if you're the car that's holding everybody up or you feel you are we need to make sure we're obeying even silly things like speed limits even if we disagree and I was thinking about situations in which I find it very difficult to submit and I think one for me is when I don't respect somebody very much. So if I think, if it works, somebody who I think is not doing a very good job, and they're my senior, I find it really difficult, and it's a real challenge for me to still to um, obey them. Sometimes I have to you know, follow the instructions I've been given or whatever, and, and to really submit to people like that. I don't know if you can think of things in your own lives, in your own situations, but even though we live in a relatively easy society in some ways, there are still ways in which, as Christians, we can demonstrate submission, isn't it? And that we do live our lives differently to other people. That's just a finishing thought. Shall we all um, say the grace to each other? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit